Hello guys and girls, hope you're all doing well, this video finds you good and I'm going to be talking about the new Amazon Prime movie or a new Amazon Prime movie and it is called One Night in, uh, One Night in Miami it's a new release and it's the first film to be directed by Regina um, King who's, who's an actress, been in a bunch of movies um, I think she was in If Bill Street Could Talk the, from the director of Moonlight, came out a couple of years ago now. Also, pretty sure she played one of the leads in, in Girls Trip, that comedy movie. But a bunch of films. I think she'll be quite familiar, um, to some people anyway. Pretty sure she won an Oscar for If Bill Street Could Talk. But her first time directing, and it comes from a stage play, and it's the fictionalized version of of true events, so inspired by truth at least, and it's about the meeting in a hotel room of the real life characters of Muhammad Ali, sorry, then known as Cassius Clay, because this is before he came out as being, you know, um, Muslim. Um, also, you've got the singer, Sam Cooke. You've got the NFL superstar, um, Jim Brown. And you also have Malcolm X, of course, a massive political figure around this time. And they, they meet in the hotel. They're there because Ali or Clay as he's known then, has, has a big fight that weekend in town and it's actually the fight that made him his big win against Sonny Liston. It's, it's that sort of win which puts him on, a, on the map as a boxer. But they're all there and they take the opportunity to meet up. And it's something Malcolm X has arranged. But originally... The others are there under the impression that there's going to be like politicians there as well, other politicians, white politicians from the government, from, um, well, it's not Kennedy anymore because he's, this is after he, he was assassinated, but from the president's office. And that's the idea that they're there to talk about civil rights and, and things like that. And it turns out none, none of the other officials shown up, so it's just Martin, not sorry, um, Malcolm X and the three others. And it, you can sort of see that it's from the stage play because a lot of the movie, after a certain point, takes place in that hotel room and you're sort of bouncing back and forth between the characters. And Malcolm X is... There's various things that happens. I mean, this is spoiler free, so I won't really go into it. But Malcolm X is trying to get Ali to come out as Muslim, and he thinks that that will be a big stand and it will be a big step forward to have Ali on his side. He's planning on starting this new political sort of movement, and you've got the various other characters who are at at various points kind of come together but they also clash and they talk about the whole situation and it's a really good film um i was really engrossed throughout i think it has a nice sort of pacing you know you, you get to know the characters a bit at the start and what it does is it gives you where they are each one when we start the movie sort of thing so we kind of you know we see Ali in, in a big sort of fight as he's trying to work his way up the ranks we see an example of casual racism with um, Jim Brown when he goes to this, this sort of rich white guy's house small role for Bo Bridges who I haven't seen in anything for a while but that's kind of a good example of this sort of casual sort of racism where the Bo Bridges character is all very lovey-dovey with with um, Brown's character 
with Jim Brown, but then because he's essentially still racist and it's still the 60s segregation and stuff, he then turns around and is, is quite racist, says, you know, I can't let you in, in this house and uses the N word. And, and that's kind of it. And that sort of, that scene paints a perfect picture of the situation because what happens is he's nice to him because he's this successful footballer, this NFL star in, in like that, that sort of city. So the Bow Bridges character supports that team. So it, it gets into, I think, how, you know, white people can, can like, patronise black people, where they kind of give them plaudits and and they're happy to um, to kind of be nice to them and, and sort of suck up to them if they're doing something like that for, like, in a sport for, like, the hometown team. But at the same time, underneath that, there's still racism. And when it comes down to it, they still don't treat them as human beings. You know, that they're, they're sort of praising the footballer. They're not really treating them as human beings, which is then sort of proven in the next instance where he won't let him in because of the colour of his skin. And the way that just comes out is, like, really shocking, but it captures it really well. And... It's something which is then a recurring theme in the film later on in some of the discussions they have because, um, yeah, it, it does get brought up, particularly, I think, by Malcolm X about the fact that you have these these kind of superstars in, in their field. I mean, obviously, Ali is only just getting his big break, but the other two are kind of, really big superstars in their respective field like football and, and singing and so it, it sort of made a point about the fact that are they kind of selling out that becomes a talking point um you know because they're being used by white people so to speak because they happen to have this talent and it can benefit white people then are they selling out rather than actually using their fame to try and do something about civil rights and about the inequality and stuff? So <clears throat> that's another reason why that scene works really well because it does set up a theme sort of later on in the discussion. And we also see Sam Cooke and, and his sort of career as a singer and kind of some racism towards him, towards, like, from an all-white sort of audience at, like, this one particular performance. Um, and also we see Malcolm X on TV and, and the stuff he's trying to push for and uh, how his wife is, like, worried, essentially, for, for, for her husband's life and... Um, you know, will we come home safe, sort of, on, 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 on any given night? So I, I like the fact that they spent the time to just show those snippets and exactly the situation they're in. But it's a really engaging, engrossing film, and the acting's really good. I think you can... I think it deals with the themes very even-handed, like there's some really powerful moments, but there's also a lightness of touch, which you definitely need in this sort of film. And, and that doesn't feel forced, it feels very natural, because it feels like this group of people who know each other quite well, and and... They just relate to each other, and they do find humour in in these sorts of things. And obviously, they're sort of young guys as well. Particularly, I mean, Ali's only twenty two at this point, and I think the others are meant to be young. Maybe apart from Malcolm X, I get the impression he's a bit older. I, I don't actually know his 
his age at this point, but a really good chemistry between the four leads, and it really flows nicely. And as I said, it's good they had a, a lighter touch because I think it could have been a bit heavy-handed if not. And w one thing I'll say is that even though it comes from a stage play, it never really felt overly stagey, which is always the danger. And so I think that's definitely credit to King. Uh, directing for the first time she she does a really solid job and probably one of the advantages of being an actor and then directing is that you you have this sort of rapport with actors and I think that worked really well I think she was able to kind of talk to them and speak on their level and, and get these performances out of them and good cast anyway but so I think King deserves props I think she she she, she does does a good job here another thing I liked when it came to the casting is that it was very unstarry unshowy sort of casting um you know these leads are, are kind of little known actors they definitely popped up in a few things but they're not big Hollywood style stars and it's always the way in these like true life stories where you have famous real life people that if you cast someone too well known it can be distracting and it can sort of take you out of it but this definitely doesn't you know as I said these are not massive names like, like the guy Sam Cook, he's best known for being in in Hamilton on stage, um, which is what another reason why it's good casting because he's obviously got the chops when it comes to the singing because you do see him singing at, at a couple of times. There's some good musical moments as well in this. The music is used really well. Like there's. Again, I'm not really going to go into too much spoiler stuff, but there's a good scene where um, Malcolm X actually uses like a bit of music from Bob Dylan, which is sort of relevant to, to the argument he's making, which kind of turns it around on Sam Cooke and kind of says, well, you, you know, this white guy who doesn't come from our background he's actually saying more than you about racial inequality in, in this one song and there's re re really good use of music like that but yeah the actor who plays Sam Cooke is like best known for being um, in Hamilton on stage he also I know him from person of interest a small well recurring role in that I guess but a supporting part He's, he's really good in that. But so when I saw he was in it, I was happy because I really liked the actor. And a bunch of people, Atticus Hodges, he was in The Invisible Man this year or last year, one or two other things. And But yeah, it's not a well-known cast. It's unshowy performances. I, I really like the guy who was playing Ali. And... They they all have really good chemistry and really back and forth. It felt like a good sort of stage play, but not one. I mean, obviously turning it into a film, not one that was over stagey. And I think I think I like how well balanced the characters were in their arguments. Uh, because although although they're all sympathetic they're all meant to be likable and you're kind of here to in engage with their causes I think there's black and white <laughs> excuse the pun in a way but there's black and white in all of them there's shades of grey because there's various like conflicts between them throughout the film and I think there's a moment where all of them kind of 
even Malcolm X, even the one who's like pushing this whole agenda, there's there's sort of this thing with Ali, where at one point he's kind of called out on it, and it it's at least hinted that he maybe has his own agenda, and he hasn't been truthful with Ali to kind of get him on board, and but there's certain like the debate between. X and um, Sam Cooke about the whole musical thing and is Cook out and out sort of thing and there's the, a the very like sort of um, compelling argument that, that Sam Cooke makes in return so the sort of shades of grey and it's, it's a very compelling engrossing drama really well acted good direction as i said there's a lighter touch to it so really good stuff um i think there's talk of awards for this possibly obviously we're still waiting on like nominations but i, I would be happy if this did get some awards or at least nominations so re really recommend it and thank god <laughs> after the dullest ditch walk to film I reviewed last time, which was the call, which you can see me take a part of on this channel. But yeah, One Night in Miami by contrast gets two thumbs up from me. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I thought it was very good. So that's one I can recommend. If you've seen the film, then please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you would like to support this channel and help this sort of content keep coming, then please like this video. You can also subscribe to the channel if, if you want to keep this stuff coming. Um, share the video as well, all the channel around that, that would be potentially get me out to, to many more eyes, new viewers, new subscribers. And another thing is ding the bell on YouTube because then as soon as a video goes up or as soon as I go live for a live stream, which I tend to do quite regularly, then it will notify you of that as well. But thanks for listening and I'll see you guys again soon. Goodbye.